Praxis Prepper. Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and what a difference a week makes. In this video, I'm going to be talking about this device here, what it is, and how it gets hooked up, and why it's important for what's coming uh, in our future, potentially. Uh, but before that, I want to just kind of talk about the arc of the last week. Uh, my last week video, I was talking about the potential for Russia going into Ukraine. I said uh, that I honestly didn't really know whether it was going to happen or not, but my suspicion was that it probably was, because people people tend to just trip their way into war, unfortunately, all the time. So it was my my presumption that we were probably going to get where we are today, but I didn't really know, and, you know, here we are. As, as little as 48 hours ago, it was difficult to get information about what was go uh, going on over there, at least from the mainstream media. You know, they, they were kind of reluctant to really talk about it much, uh, and it was hard to get, you know, material uh, from mainstream media sources regarding it. Even yesterday, after the tanks had rolled in, there was a little bit, but you could tell that the news organizations were kind of scrambling. I think maybe they had believed their own propaganda about how it wasn't going to happen, or at least it wasn't imminent. Uh, and, you know, they were scrambling to kind of start being able to report over there. And as of this morning, it's like wall to wall. That's anybody. That's all that anybody's talking about. And that's what it's like to be like a normal person. You know, a person that's not ready for anything is your world is constantly getting flipped upside down and you're always having to go zero to 60. And that impacts, you know, non-prepper uh, people, normal people, and uh, and also uh, people who are into emergency preparedness. And I, I want to talk about two examples in this video of, uh, you know, two people who, uh, for whom I have a great deal of respect. I think they're very, uh, you know, intelligent people, very wise people, um, but they've, uh, to some degree, fallen into this trap. And uh, we'll start with the non-prepper because they have, to a great degree, fallen into this trap. Uh, you know, this is someone that I follow on Twitter. They, they, uh, like I mentioned, they're, you know, they're an intelligent person. They're very wise. One of my favorite tweets from them is that they said something like, uh, uh, money doesn't change people, it reveals people. That's a very wise thing to say. It's very insightful, you know, and, and they're always having content like that. But they had a tweet just yesterday where they said uh, that they realized that they should have uh, some uh, iodine pills. Iodine, of course, is something that you can take if there's radioactive fallout, whether it's from a nuclear plant that's been hacked and is in meltdown or from nuclear war. Radioactive iodine can help. I'm sorry, not radioactive iodine. Regular iodine that's not radioactive can help protect your thyroid. Your thyroid absorbs um, uh, iodine, and if you can saturate it with regular iodine, uh, it is going to not need to absorb the radioactive stuff. It's kind of like you want to, if you don't want your sponge to get radioactive stuff in it, you fill it with water so it, it doesn't have any more space to uh, absorb anymore. By the way, if you're interested in uh, potassium iodine tablets, yeah, you can get the official, like, um, uh, you know, like nuclear fallout ones, uh, and those are quite expensive, but you can also get really, really cheap, just regular potassium iodine, it's just a salt, uh, and uh, you can you can get a lot more of it for a lot less money. I'm going to put a link down in the description below if you want to pick some of that up. It is infinitely less expensive if you don't buy the special radioactive uh, fallout kind of stuff. It's, uh, you know, the same material, but it's, it doesn't have that branding. And it's like, it's, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen the, the Simpsons. They have a joke in there uh, where uh, Hollywood comes to Springfield and uh, like the prices of everything go, goes up. Someone wants to buy a screw and they're like, oh, well, you want a movie screw. That's like $10 a screw. You know, it's the same kind of thing. It gets a premium price because it gets packaged about radio, uh, you know, radioactive fallout and everything. But you can just get potassium iodine. Much cheaper. Uh, link in the description below if you want to uh, pick that up. Anyway, this gentleman uh, said that he uh, mentioned to his wife that they should get some, and he said that his wife said, I'm way ahead of you. I already ordered it, and it's in the mail, which means that she was only about 24 hours ahead of him because it, it hasn't even gotten to their house yet. And that's their version of being prepared. As you think about something kind of pretty much at the last minute, probably when there's a bunch of other people and they're kind of presuming and crossing their fingers that it actually shows up in the mail. You know, that's not pre preparing for things, that is reacting to things almost at the last possible second. Um, you know, and there's a lot of that, and that makes people's lives difficult and stressful when, you know, you're doing everything at the last minute. Uh, the, the other person I want to talk about, uh, again, have an enormous, enormous amount of respect for them. I absolutely love their content. Um, Canadian Prepper, uh, uh, Nate over Canadian Preparedness. Uh, one of my favorite channels here on YouTube. Uh, he got me into doing my own channel. Uh, absolutely wonderful content, invaluable resource for all of us. But he said something in yesterday's video, which, uh, you know, kind of got me thinking that I, I sort of don't agree with that. And what Nate had said was that uh, given that this invasion of Ukraine is happening, there was a lot of material on his channel that he had been planning on bringing that was more like practical skills kind of stuff. Uh, like what we're going to talk about here. <laughs> 
<laughs> with this. Um, uh, but he's going to be holding off on a lot of that because of you know the ongoing kind of kinetic situation in Ukraine and. Uh, due to that, he's going to be changing up what's on his channel. Uh, now, I know that Nate serves kind of a different market uh, uh, than I do. Uh, I, <laughs> I serve an incredibly small uh, uh, group of people who are already pretty much prepared. You know, I, you guys are in the hundreds. Uh, Canadian preparedness uh, serves a market of people that's in the hundreds of thousands, and a lot of the people in his audience are, like, just starting out. So maybe that kind of makes sense uh, for uh, for that, from that perspective, because a lot of the people that he's talking to, like, they aren't ready for any of this stuff anyway. Um, but it really is anti-prepping, the idea that events unfold on the ground and they force you to kind of change around your plans. Now, it's, it's good to kind of make, you know, small modifications, uh, you know, when they are required. But the whole idea of prepping and preparedness is that you are spreading out all of that, that work, you know. What's potentially happening here, uh, you know, with the situation with Ukraine and Russia and whether NATO gets sucked into that and all that. Um, I've been preparing for that for years, and it's a lot easier to prepare for something like that over a series of years than it is over a series of weeks or even uh, or even days. Um, so that is kind of the whole reason that one should prep and prepare. It's not to do a bunch of useless stuff that you you know was unnecessary. The idea is that if you do this stuff and you spread it out over a long period of time, when the actual event happens, there's not really that much to do and there's not really that much stress related to it. Well, I'm sure there's plenty of stress anyway, but you get what I'm saying. You know, it's, it's a worse situation if uh, you are completely unprepared for something and it's, it's happening versus it's happening, it's awful, but at least you were prepared for it. Um, so what you're going to see here on my channel is not a big change in what I kind of generally share with you guys. Uh, you know, it's still going to be, you know, sprouting seeds and, uh, you, know, you know, different recipes, uh, you know, different I items like this. I there's not going to be like, you know, what you're seeing on a lot of other channels where it's all about like, what's happening in Ukraine? Are we going to be drawn in and everything? You know, you know, we'll see what happens with that. But in terms of being a prepper, it, being someone who's into preparedness, the whole idea is that just because that one event is happening, you don't put necessarily all your fixated interest into that one thing. There are other things uh, to kind of be working on, other things to be thinking about, and um, there's not going to be a huge change on my channel. Uh, it, 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 that might make me kind of seem out of touch or aloof, but that's sort of the point of being a prepper is that you get yourself out of touch with those kind of zero to 60 world upside down kind of situations where you can kind of just keep going on with what you've been doing. So I wanted to give you guys just a heads up uh, that tonight's video that's going to be released in a little bit. This is like a, a bonus video. I'm going to be releasing tonight's regular video at 5.30 and I think you'll enjoy it. It's a useful video. It's got a funny opening. I've been trying to get back into the funny openings, uh, you know, try to get more time to do those. Uh, as, the, as the housework's been uh, slowly diminishing, I've been able to put in a little bit more time with those. So it's got a fun opening and I think the uh, content's important as well. But in this video, what I wanted to share is this right here. And this does relate to the period that we're potentially going into. Uh, this is an EMP shield device. And what this does is it protects your house. Allegedly, I'm trusting the white papers and the science on it. Um, it, it allegedly will protect your house from a massive power surge or an e a EMP, a CME. Uh, what those things are, uh, CME is an acronym for a coronal mass injection. That's a, a bunch of charged particles that get shot out of the sun during like, a, like an X-class flare. Uh, and they can induce electrical current over power lines and that in, that current can get slammed into your house and destroy things in your house. This device is designed to protect you from that type of thing. An EMP, an electromagnetic pulse, is similar to a CME. Uh, it's created by humans using a, a generally like a nuclear device exploded high up in the atmosphere, which creates an electromagnetic wave, which does the same kind of induced current in power lines, shooting uh, massive uh, surges, uh, you know, into your home. Uh, another thing that this can protect you from is just a kind of like regular run-of-the-mill massive power surge that could be created from a power, line, a power plant if it was uh, malfunctioning in some way, which could occur if it was perhaps hacked into. I'm not an electrical expert. I don't know what all the possibilities are there, but it's an, it's an insurance policy is what it is. I was finally able to get it hooked up onto the house, and I want to talk a little bit about how this thing hooks in. Uh, if you get the whole house one from EMP Shield, uh, I'll put a link down in the description below if you want to uh, you know, check out their website. Um, uh, if you get the whole house filter, which is what I have here, uh, 
it's just a box, what you see right here, uh, with three, uh, I'm sorry, four wires dangling out of, uh, out of the back side. And what you do with the four wires, I'm not going to go into actually how the wire or panel, because if you don't already know how to kind of go into an pa electrical panel, you know, I, I, I would not feel qualified to teach anyone how to do that. Uh, but it is, it's a pretty simple install. Uh, inside an electrical panel, I'm not going to open this one up, mostly because my shoulder is healing from uh, some uh, injury I had in my shoulder. And uh, using the screwdriver is uh, a little bit stressful on my shoulder. But again, if you don't already know what the inside of an electrical panel looks like, uh, then, uh, you know, this is not the video to learn about it from anyway. But uh, you got four wires that come in. And if you're familiar with the way these are, there, there's two hot lines running down the middle. And then you've got your neutrals and a ground bar on the side. Uh, the neutral is the white wire. Uh, the hots are the black wires. And the ground is the green wire. Uh, so all you have to do to install this thing is you run uh, the wires into your electrical box. It's just a little knockout here. And I uh, used a, just a little piece of conduit to jump them over. I, you don't technically need that. You could just have kind of like a wire clamp situation like you have here. Uh, but, you know, I thought it was a cleaner way to get them in. Anyway, you get your four wires in uh, and they're color coded. So it's really easy. You've got a ground wire, which is green, and you uh, clamp that into the grounding bar. You've got the neutral wire, which is white, and you clamp that into the, the neutral bar. And, you know, if you're in the electrical box, you see that all the green wires go to one place, all the white wires go to another place. And then the, you're left with uh, uh, two other wires. There's a, um, a black and a red, I believe. Those are the two hot wires, and those get uh, stuck into a double pole breaker. I've got a 20-amp double pole breaker right here, and uh, each breaker has its own little connection point, and one red... Uh, the red goes to one and the black goes to the other. Those are kind of interchangeable. It doesn't really matter which way you do it. Uh, and that's it. It's a pretty easy install. Uh, now, you can uh, attach them if you already have a 20 amp double pole breaker in your fuse box. You could uh, attach to that. For example, I have this well line here. That's a 20, 20 amp double pole breaker. Now, I could have run it directly to that. The reason that I got a dedicated one, uh, I bought this specifically for this, uh, was I was speaking to the people at EMP Shield. And they suggested that while you can put it in that way, what happens if your well happens to trip for whatever reason? If your well trips and your EMP shield is connected to that, suddenly your EMP shield is disconnecting from, uh, disconnected from that. So you want to keep it on something that can't necessarily accidentally kick off. It cost me an extra, I think, $13 to get another breaker. I figured that's good insurance. I bought that. And that's really all there, all there was to it. Four wires come out ground, two hots and a neutral, uh, you, you put it in there. If you're ever going to do any work in your electrical box, I'll give you a little advice here. Kill the power to the whole thing. Have a flashlight. Kill the power to the whole house so that you can be you know, safer going in there. Um, you don't technically have to do that, and I didn't do that, but you know, if you want to avoid possibly killing yourself, you can definitely kill yourself if you go into these and you don't know what you're doing. So it's a cool device, and it's going to protect me from coronal mass ejections from the sun, hopefully, EMPs hopefully, <laughs> and general power surges that could come down the line for whatever reason. And we're entering into a situation which could easily create a heightened risk of EMPs or uh, power surges from power plants potentially being hacked. And, you know, any little thing that you can do to prepare for that, I think, is probably worth doing. Uh, you can get some uh, percentage off of this. I, I don't have this, but... Um, Marfugal News is another good uh, resource here on YouTube, and they have a, um, a discount code, I think it's MARF, M-A-R-F. You can uh, check Marfugal News, they're always, they're always mentioning the EMP shield on there, but you can get a, uh, I think it was like $50 off or something like that, uh, if you use their, their code, and you can get one for $50 less. The, the whole unit, it was like about 300 bucks to get the unit, so that's it. I hope you find that helpful, and uh, in about an hour, Although this video has been like an hour already, so maybe it's like in like in like four minutes. Uh, at 5.30 tonight, Eastern Standard Time, I'm going to be releasing the other video, which is, what is it, food related? I think it's food related. Yeah, it's food related. Uh, and it's got that fun opening that I think you guys will all enjoy. So that's it. And expect more of the same from my channel. I'm not going to be flipping it upside down and backwards for what's going on in Ukraine, because that's the whole idea of being a prepper, is that when the world goes upside down, you just keep on doing what you've been doing. <laughs> that's it. Thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com.
Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.